Let's bring in the state auditor, J.B. McCuskey. J.B. in for an abbreviated segment here with us this morning. Appreciate you squeezing us in, J.B. Hey, guys. How are y'all? Excellent. Thank you. I want to ask you, as the state auditor, I know your opinion was uh, requested in regards to this money, this $28 million uh, that was uh, ultimately moved into a fund that helped build the Marshall Baseball Stadium. And this was uh, money that was uh, basically uh, rescue plan money which we all thought had pretty tight strings attached to it. Is this going to be a problem for the governor and the state, J.B.? Uh, I certainly hope not, uh, but my guess tells me that it will be. All right, tell us, um, tell us you more. Know, we spent millions of dollars on – we didn't. The governor's office spent millions of dollars on consultants um, to tell them how to spend this money. And what was interesting is, is that they had one right down the hallway. Um, our office spent an enormous amount of time – helping guide our local governments through the exact same guidance um, that the, the governor's office had to follow. And, and what we found is, is that our county and city governments did a phenomenal job of taking this incredible once-in-a-generation federal funding and building water and sewer infrastructure with it. As we all know, uh, you know, Internet's important, uh, but nobody's put in a business where you can't flush a toilet. And we have catastrophic centuries-old water and sewer infrastructure that has to be replaced before we can call ourselves a first world economy. And, uh, and we went around the state uh, with Senator Manchin, if you guys remember, and, and advised these folks that, you know, this, let's take this money and let's build things that'll last. And, uh, and by and large, our cities and counties were really, really great about making sure that's what happened with it. The early days of the COVID pandemic, I remember Governor Justice was very slow to spend the money, the first tranche that came in, because they wanted to make sure that they spent it appropriately. But it doesn't sound at the back end of this that the same examination was made on these funds as to its appropriateness? Um, I am not going to comment on the appropriateness of the spending. Here's what I will say. And I don't know if you guys remember the we uncovered about three and a half million dollars of federal fraud in Richwood. You remember after the flooding? Yes. And uh, and so, you know, the, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Richwood is, is that there it couldn't be more obvious that they didn't spend three and a half million dollars cleaning up their town. Does that make sense? It does. And so there's a concept in the law called race ipsa loquitur. What that means is, is the thing speaks for itself. And as we look around West Virginia, it doesn't feel to me like an extra $3 billion was invested into our infrastructure. Um, and so as we go back and look at how how did we use our COVID relief money, uh, I think it'll be very, very important to see uh, whether or not that money was used to build things that will outlast the politicians who took credit for building them. And that is one of the things that, that I, I was very, very keen to talk about, is that naming things after yourself is way less important than changing the future for folks who need it changed. And what that means is, is putting ourselves in a position to be able to build infrastructure in every single nook, cranny, and corner of this state without having to play whack-a-mole with gas lines and power lines and water lines. Um, and I think that's potentially our most important task as we move forward. Let's go to Bill Stubblefield, who sits in the Bill Stubblefield chair here at the <laughs> yeah. radio station. Bill. Good morning, JB. Good to talk with hey, you. Hey, Bill. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well, thank you. Hey, uh, oh, for, it's great to hear from you. Well, and likewise. Uh, put this in context for the uh, some of our listening audience who have not been following as close as we have. Uh, early in the COVID days, uh, the, the governor or the state uh, – use some of their money uh, to fill some some urgent needs in the infrastructure or the uh, the health department needs uh, so they did that they they loan the they gave money to areas that needed it and then after the COVID is over uh, the governor reimbursed themselves by a sizable amount of money and it was put into a governor's fund and from that governor's Call fund and donation yeah. fund. Thank yeah. you, JB. Yeah, gift and donation yeah. fund. Uh, so anyway, all that is fairly straightforward up front at, up to this point. But then out of that fund, which has no oversight at all uh, tied in with, the governor chose to use $28 million for a baseball field in Marshall. No, 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 just 13 Thirteen. Okay. Okay. I There's thought still it was fifteen million dollars left in for more gifts in, in the donations. Okay. Yeah. So thirteen million dollars usually. Yeah. A couple of questions there. To me, this is where it gets awful shaky. Uh, were you asked, or should have you been asked 
early in the game how the money could be or should be used, or are you strictly an auditor after the fact? I'm looking about what your legal role is. So my legal role is to effectuate the governor's uh, intent as long as it has a rational basis in the law. And when we saw that transfer come through, it was immediately evident to me that this was a little different. It was a large amount of money going into a fund I'd never heard of or seen. And so we asked the governor to provide his legal and accounting basis for that. And so we got back a lengthy uh, opinion from their, from a company called BDO, which is a very large international accounting firm that the governor hired to give them advice on how to spend this money and their lawyers. And so at that point, we were a couple days away from the from the federal government clawing all this money back because it hadn't been spent yet. And we were then forced with the choice, you know, do, do we do we allow the federal government to claw all this money back? And believe me, this was made clear to us. Or do we allow the governor to transfer this money over? And of course, I didn't know what it was going to be used for. However, it being put into the gifts and donations fund, it was fairly clear. So, um, you know, we, we were given a an opinion by a large uh, accounting firm and uh, a, a law firm as to why they believed that this was um, this was legal. And at that point, it becomes a bit of a constitutional crisis if I try to substitute my legal and accounting judgment for what is theirs. And this is where uh, uh, Berkeley Bentley uh, uh, got involved. He was saying that he felt it was legal. Is that correct? That's correct. It is their opinion that it was. What is the official purpose of the Gifts and Donations Fund? Uh, I, again, I believe we can get back to the um, race ipsa loquitur concept there and uh, I think the, the, the definition of that fund is defined in its in its uh, description. So what are the options here? I don't mean to be coy, but no, I no, no. I, I, the governor to give out gifts and to donate money. Okay. <laughs> it's just, Which explanatory. is sort of odd when you consider that it's, um, it's our money. Well, it's, and it's also the money from people in Iowa and Tennessee and Mississippi, right? They're federal, <laughs> federal dollars. Well, it's our allocation of everyone's money. That's well said. Okay. So the, the folks in Tennessee are, are funding... A, a, Thirteen million dollar baseball stadium, right? I mean, the way this, this it comes is, out, that would be accurate. As are the people in Mingo County. And how does how does that make sense to anybody? Um, again, I, I would have had to have been a mind reader to know what the governor's office was going to do with the money. Uh -huh. So our only our, what we were asked to do was to transfer the money into that fund, and after that, I, I can't. They're allowed to give Marshall money. And so once it got into that fund, they believe that the, the, the COVID rules do not apply anymore because it was they were paying themselves back for expenses that happened in a different department. It is a very, very roundabout way of taking COVID money and spending it for something that the guidelines probably didn't intend for it to be spent on. However, if they can go back and prove that they had X number of expenses that they had never reimbursed themselves for, you know, then then they'll be in the clear. Uh, but I haven't seen that yet. Will your office actually audit this transaction, uh, JB? Yeah. Well, we already did. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they provided us with invoices and and with the appropriate payment uh, uh, documentation to effectuate what was their desire. And it, at the end of the day, it's mostly my office's job to make sure that people like you and people like the Senate Finance Committee and people in the media and all of the rest of the taxpayers know what happened. And that's why we created the checkbook, right? So that people can see in real time what is actually being done with money. It is, it is as much our job to make sure the payments are legal as to make sure that the people who make them are held accountable. And what I'm really excited about is that this that has happened um, because of our office's um, commitment to ensuring that every taxpayer and every media member knows how the taxpayer dollars are being spent, we're now having this conversation. 20 years ago, this would have happened in the dark, in a back room with a bunch of cigars. Unfortunately, it would have been the same eight people making these decisions, but uh, you understand my point, and yes. no one would have ever known. Hey, JB, I know you have to go. I appreciate your time today. Any final thoughts on where this goes from here? I think where this goes from here is we're going to start having a great big conversation about how did we spend billions of COVID dollars to ensure the long-term stability of the state's economy? And it is my hope that, um, that, we, that we will find that there is either enough money to keep going or that we will find that we did it 
or at the very least, we will figure out how to do it better if this happens again. And uh, again, I can't tell you guys how amazing our city and county governments were in stepping up and finding generational uses for this money to make sure that, that they're doing everything they can to provide the services that they have to. One quick question, if I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, you may not agree with it, uh, the way it should have been done, but do you think any any legality, any mis, uh, uh, misuse of funds will be attached to this transaction? Um, I hesitate to make, an, to make any comment there. Okay. I, I, it would be, the answer to your question is, is probably not, but I have not, it's impossible for me to see that the, the, the total number of transactions as they related to both the CARES Act and ARPA money is so vast that I don't have a way right now on the phone to be able to answer that question. Fair enough. Thank ultimately, you. Isn't it I def- certainly hope not. And I certainly believe that if, if such a, an inquiry needs to be made, our office has kept an accounting of those records that will be second to none. And it's the federal government's decision as to whether the money was spent properly or not, right? That's correct. But right. now JB, we gotta let JB go. We got. We no, got. We promised to. I'm good for a minute. All right. Okay. Good, good, yeah. The uh, but the fact that they paid back a loan the state made does that color the at all the transaction or what the, what was done? The fact that it was paying back a debt. Yeah, I think we're starting to get into this concept that my mother used to always instill into me, and that is uh, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Yeah. And it really ends up. You know, it's two different analyses, and I think you hit on that perfectly. On that note, now we will let you go, JB. <laughs> Thanks, JB. Hey, guys, thank you all. Have a great day. Take care. Appreciate your time.